Kate Foss too. Welcome to Creative Home Studio. Hey guys, I hope you had a wonderful week. Today is Saturday, May 22nd. And we're back for a quick update. I think this will be fairly quick. Oh, I'm dropping stuff already. It's not a good sign. <laughs> My table's a little crowded today. So last Saturday we had our nephew's wedding and it was wonderful. Oh my goodness, they are a beautiful couple. The church is on like Michigan Avenue right downtown like you can see the capital capital of Michigan is Lansing so we were in Lansing Michigan and it's the resurrection of Christ Catholic Church they are so full of the Holy Spirit there I have never been to a wedding that well I teared up like right away when when David walked our nephew David when David walked down the aisle with his um his mom and and oh my gosh so I teared up a little bit then but then I, I was fine the rest of the time and then there was the music let me tell you what y'all <laughs> the music every time I talk about this I get the goosebumps and I'm sure I will again I was just talking about it earlier with some folks the music was done by all people like all friends of the bride and groom they handpicked their friends that could sing or could play an instrument I don't know how many instruments there were but it sounded like an orchestra and the the different voices and the harmonies and the music moved actually it moved my me and my husband to tears like we were wiping tears it was so moving and people had their hands up and singing at the top of their lungs this place was just lit up with voices and oh see i'm getting the goosebumps again oh sorry <laughs> Woo! so um <laughs> uh, it was just the most incredible wedding i've ever been to what was I going to say? I guess one of the musicians and singers is, I don't know his name, but I guess he's well known as a spiritual, or not a spiritual, but a, um, in, in the, oh my gosh, words. He's well known in the music world. The, I don't like the, the religious music world. It's not that Christian, spiritual music world. <laughs> And anyways, it showed, it showed. It was just moving, so moving. And then their uh, reception was at a nature preserve out on this big deck that overlooked like this kind of swampy area. And, and the weather was nice and it was beautiful during the day, not too hot, not cold. It got a little bit chilly at night, but for, you know, hormonal women like me, it felt absolutely amazing. I had on a dress. I never wear dresses, but I had on a dress <laughs> and short sleeves. And I, I got chilly right towards the end and it was probably 1030. I think we left at 1030 or 10. I don't know, but it wasn't that late. We're like, normally I'm out on the dance floor at a wedding the entire night, but we hadn't seen some of our family in like a year and a half. So Kevin's, like his, the brother that's closest in age to him, lives seven minutes away. They're, they are Otisville address as well as us. And I haven't seen him in a year and a half because of you know what. So it was just nice to sit and catch up with everybody. So that's what we did. And I had on high heels and so I wasn't in the dancing mood anyway because my feet were killing me. I don't wear high heels very often anymore and so I was like, ah! So anyway, needless to say, we had a wonderful time. And then uh, Sunday, 
we, oh, I worked out in the yard, just planted some things, some zinnias, 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 zinnias. I never know what to say. I think it's zinnias. I think it's zinnias, but I usually say zinnias. Planted those and got some other things planted, which was the worst time to plant something because we have not had much rain. And I had to, even though they're planted in the ground, I had to continue watering them all week, the poor things. I mean, it's like legit summer here. We're talking in the 80s and humid and hot. So summer has arrived. We had the grandkids on Thursday. <laughs> and it was nice and hot. So we got the sprinkler out and let the kids run through it. It's not a sprinkler like back in the day when I was a kid. And it, the one that just back and forth like that and you run through it and Kevin's like you were spoiled you had a sprinkler to run through I'm like what this is not like expensive anyway he had a creek to play in with all his friends I'm like well I would have rather played in the creek I was a major tomboy I was not a prissy little girl at all I was out well it's because I had an older brother and then the next door neighbors he they had one child and he was my brother's age and the, the other neighbors, he was uh, my a, a year older than my brother. It was just not any girls my age. So I hung out with the guys and I rode dirt bikes. <clears throat> I rode motocross, bicycles, jumping ramps, and playing cowboys and Indians and cops and robbers, jumping in trees and running through the woods. <laughs> That's just what I did. <coughs> I need to get some water. I'll be right back. <coughs> Oh, there we go. I got one. <coughs> Goodness. So why was oh I was I'm like where did I why did I talk about all that? Uh For Ellery's birthday, we bought her water toys because I just know on Thursdays when they're here and it's nice out, they want to be outside. We bought them a water table last year and they love that and they love playing in that. But that's stationary. I want them running around. I want them exhausted. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want them to sleep good for their nap. I want them to sleep good for Brianna and Eric. So it's just good for them anyway. So we have, it was a thing you hook up to the hose. I posted pictures. I, oh, I couldn't, you know what? On Instagram, I couldn't post like, you know how you can click so that you can have several pictures. They wouldn't let me do that. I could only post one picture and I couldn't find one picture that had both the kids in it. So I'm like, oh, fine, Instagram, I'm not going to post anything. I think I might've posted something in the stories instead, but I posted on Facebook. But it's this thing you hook up to the hose and it has all these things that come up out of that hose and they're kind of rubbery. So when the water goes through it, they kind of woo and the water is just like crazy. Not just this station, not this predictable water feature. So the kids love that and uh, they, so we didn't take them out to play in the water before their nap because they got here kind of late by the time they were done eating breakfast. It was like nap time. So I got to get stuff for my lips. I can tell I'm licking my lips and no one wants to see me sticking my tongue out, wetting my lips for this entire video. So at nap time, right before I, mean, I had Ellery's little cot all ready, her pillow and her teddy bear, and I had everything ready. And I get a text from Bree and she's like, oh, I forgot to tell you, no nap for Ellery, just quiet time. And I, and I text her back and I put, and oh, 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 no, with the little emoji with those big eyes, like, no, <laughs> because I was like, what, what? She's three years old. She needs a nap, <laughs> but you do what mom says. That's how I roll. So <laughs> we, we had her lay in her cot for a little bit because she was really wound up. Like Papa was running around the house chasing them and they were running and screaming and I'm like, hun, okay, we need to calm them down before they're going to go, you know, lay down or whatever. So we had her lay in her, uh, on her cot anyways for a little bit. And I looked like, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes later I looked and she, she's not on her cot. I mean, the, 
the camera that I have on her, I can just see the cot and that's it. And I was like, uh oh. So I go in there because it's not child proof in there. I have art supplies. I have stuff in my bedroom that she could make a huge mess with. And I go in there and she's sitting on the other side of the bed with the, with the bedspread, like trying to hide and stuff. So I go, what are you doing? And she, and I said, you're supposed to have quiet time. You're not supposed to be up. I said, you want grandma to rock you? So I'm carrying her out. I'm carrying her down the hallway and she goes, Gammy Zizi, I had a nice nap. And I said, you did not even nap. And she's just so funny. And then I looked at her and she's going like this, like, like, I know. Just funny things like that. Oh, the other thing that happened that was funny, Kevin had mowed the lawn and in because we have so much pollen right now, the pine trees, when the wind hits them, you just see this big cloud going across the yard. And so without having rain, also, it was sticking everywhere and on the deck and everything. And so with allergies, so Kevin tries to keep the pollen off everything and just keep grass clippings off everything. So he goes around with a leaf blower and he blows everything. Well, the kids were like, what's that noise, Gemma? And I said, it's just Papa. He's blowing, he's using a leaf blower to blow the grass off. Blah, blah, blah. I explain it to him like they even understand what I'm saying. So he was coming up the deck and they were looking out the window and he came up there. <laughs> he came up on the deck with this thing because it's a big thing on his back. And he like went like that, ah, like that. And he blew it at the thing. Well, it scared the living daylights. Ellery goes screaming and running and Easton's, ah, they both are crying. <laughs> Look, I'm like, they're scared. Go away. And so, anyways, Ellery was, and, and uh, Easton would say, put away, put away, carry, carry. <laughs> so cute. Not that I'm laughing that they were scared, but it was, they're just, the reaction is adorable. But they seriously had crocodile tears coming down their face. Papa's mean. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so, and then... <laughs> It's been a really busy and great week. This morning, we were invited to breakfast by a couple of our friends that we haven't hung out with in a while. So we went to McPherson's restaurant in uh, Millington. And that is Kevin's family owns that restaurant. And they make oh, good homemade bread and cinnamon rolls. And oh, it's just so delicious. So we met them for breakfast. And I said, hey, we're halfway to Norm's. Now, Norm's is another couple towns on the same road, M15. And it's like a meat market, little grocery store market, and they have amazing meat. So we went up there and we loaded up on, you know, chicken and pork chops and pork steaks and all kinds of stuff. Got a roast because Kroger didn't have a roast, any roasts last week. And I'm craving a roast with carrots and potatoes for whatever reason. So we stocked up on that. And then on the way home, I'll show you my haul. We hit this, it's called Mike's Antiques. We hit this little antique shop and I haven't been there in over a year, well over a year, probably a year and a half to two years. And I got something that is fantastic and I can't wait to show you guys. So yeah, today's already been a great day. And then after I'm done recording this and editing it, I might not get it uploaded till tomorrow morning, but uh, we are headed to some other friends of ours. Their daughter is moving, their, her daughter, their daughter and her, her boyfriend are moving to Austin, Texas. So they're having a going away party for her this afternoon. And it's so hot and muggy. We finally did get some rain this morning. It was raining, which just made it humid. So we'll be melting into a little puddle today at their party. So announcements. Okay. So I did a video for Riley Blake Designs. They had their virtual, virtual, my gosh, they had their virtual quilt market words on I think it started Wednesday it was Wednesday Thursday Friday okay funny story I'm so bad I was included on all of the emails for the virtual quote market but I'm thinking in my head that the lines that are because okay let me back up when I think of quilt market they have one in May and then they have one in October the one in May is usually floats around the Midwest. Okay. It, you know, I, the one I've been to, I went to one in Minnesota or was it Wisconsin? 
I can't remember, it was so long ago. This was back when I designed quilting fabric before. And then I went to one in uh, Pittsburgh. I think I've been to three of them. And they, so they kind of, like, they're at different states and different cities in the Midwest. And then the other one, isn't it Houston? I, I want to say Houston, quilt market every year. That's in the same place every year in Texas. So when I think of a quilt market, I think of the fabric that is being released then because when you go to a real quilt market it's quilts hanging of uh, the fabric that's being released at that time like it's available to ship now so i i'm so bad i did i just glazed over it and i'm like well this doesn't pertain to me because mine's not coming out till fall so i will be in the fall quilt market virtual quilt market. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Now I haven't designed fabric in 10 years, so things have obviously changed. I think now they take pre-orders, so they're introducing fabric to the public earlier to get pre-orders, and maybe that makes it easier. Well, it doesn't maybe, but it does make it easier for shops if they have customers saying, hey, I want some of this fabric. You know what I mean? They can kind of gauge. So, But that's not how it was done 10 years ago when I was designing. So... I didn't realize I was going to be in this quilt market. So I think it was Tuesday, I got an email from the lady that I work with at Riley Blake's Designs and she said, uh, do you have your video ready? And I was like, what? <laughs> what video? What do I show? I don't have any fabric. Because I'm thinking that you would show fabric, you would show a quilt, you would show, you know, I didn't know, I didn't, I was clueless. And, I, and she said, well, let me get so-and-so in touch with you because she's in charge of the virtual quilt market. And I said, okay. So I didn't hear from this person. And so finally I said, okay, I need to figure this out because I said, I don't have any fabric. And she emailed back and she said, well, I did send fabric the first strike off to you, but I don't think you'll have them in time to do your video. So I'm thinking, holy cow, the video must be due like really soon. So I went back to all the emails and I found an email where it had a link. I clicked this link and it had the schedule. Well, my video was scheduled to be released or shown on their Facebook virtual quilt market Facebook group Thursday at 1230 Mountain Time. So I was like, oh my gosh. And now it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. So I said, okay, I'm just, I happened. Okay, so the Wednesday, oh my gosh. So I didn't find this out till Wednesday or I didn't make, you know, it click in my head that I have to have this ready for tomorrow and I have the grandkids tomorrow. So I have to do this today. This is like in the afternoon on Wednesday. So Wednesday also was when they started the virtual quilt market where they're like releasing every hour or every hour and a half, they would have a video released in their group, their Facebook group. And it would show the designer's video. So I watched a few of those and I'm like, oh, I got this. I can do this even without the fabric because not everybody showed fabric. Not everybody had things made. So I felt better about that. So I did my video and I edited it, edited it. I recorded it and I edited it and I, <laughs> and I sent it to the lady. It was probably 10 o'clock at night by the time I got it all done. Yeah. So anyways, talk about in the nick of time. And I said to the lady uh, that I work with at um, RBD, can I just say RBD for Riley Blake Designs? It's so much easier. Uh, I said, you're probably shaking your head and saying, ah, newbies. And she goes, actually, no, I wasn't. She said, I, I feel bad that I, you know, because I am new, she felt like she should have, you know. No, Teresa, you should be reading your emails thoroughly. And so it was totally my fault. Nothing that they did was wrong. It's totally my fault. But now I know. Now I know. And from here on out, I'm going to be more prepared. It's going to be good. <laughs> All right. I had a pattern someone brought to my attention. Okay. So this pattern came out. It's a punch sugar pattern. <clears throat> this came out. Let me see. If, hopefully there's a date on it. When I first started designing, I did not put dates on anything. So I don't know when this was released. This is one of my older patterns. It's Beautiful Garden. PN164, it's also available in cross stitch. Well, on the punch needle pattern, there's a mistake. 
I, I had two things happen this week. So on the B scap, I'm going to put this on my, on my website, TeresaCogut.com. At the top in the menu bar, I have pattern corrections. I think that's what it call, it's called. And I have my cross stitch and punch needle corrections on there. So this will be listed. So if you have this pattern in your stash, you're going to want to make this change. On the B skip, it says to alternate 1227, 1237, and 1238. Well, 1238 is not even listed anywhere. Like it's not even a floss that you're going to have for this chart or for this punch needle. It's supposed to say instead of 1238, 1232. So write that down real quick if you have this pattern and then go change it on your pattern. So it's fixed now for any future ones that we sell. And it will also be on my, my website. The other one that is an issue. Oh, I don't have it here. Oh, I got to go grab it. I'll be right back. Cross stitch 2345, early American folk sheep. Somebody brought it to my attention that I have Oscar and Terrapin reversed. So I on how it's supposed to look is uh, Oscar. How does it go now? Hmm. Now I gotta look inside. Oscar is lighter than terrapin, right? So Oscar is the light green and terrapin is the dark green. And it's supposed to be the dark green outlining the leaves. And then basically all the green is supposed to be outlined with terrapin and filled in with Oscar. Well, I had it reversed on the chart. So it's fixed now. But if you happen to have this one, let me show it to you real quick. If you happen to have this in your stash, you're going to want to go right now and fix that. The, the light green goes in the center and the terrapin, which is the dark green, goes on the outside. So fix that in your chart and I will post it to my blog is where my, my website. I like to say website. I don't like the word blog. Blog. <laughs> but I mean, ultimately it is a blog because here's the deal. I don't know if people even know this, but a website is it's considered static. It's, it's, uh, it's not fluid. That probably makes even less sense. A blog is where the homepage, you're constantly updating it about whatever, the current events or current things that are going on in your business or your life or whatever. So that's what a blog is. You constantly are changing that homepage. A website is static. It's not like, like the homepage is just a page. And then you go to all these different pages from there, but it's not like you can scroll down and look at a bunch of things. And it's usually more product driven. It's not about like your life and that type of thing. That's the difference. So mine is really a blog because I do change my homepage and I try to keep that updated as best as I can. Um, but anyway, I digress. Okay. Uh, happy birthday to... Da, 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 da. Colleen Holt from Stitching with the Sister Lees. Ooh, the 22nd. Yep, it's today. Happy birthday, Colleen. Mwah. We love you, and we hope that you have an amazing day today. I know that uh, Cheryl and Ed are there with you visiting, and so... And with Daisy. Yes, Daisy. So Lincoln and Daisy are reunited again and having some fun playing together. So that's so awesome. I love that. Um, hi, Dev and Kef. I saw your latest video and I would love to meet you. Kevin and I would love to meet both of you for lunch or dinner, whatever works. Yeah, I, I didn't realize you guys were so close to where we're going to be. So we're absolutely looking forward to that. So we have to connect. And that was so funny watching your video. Cap's like, did you know Teresa Kogan's gonna be like at the Garden of Quilts or no Thanksgiving Point? And oh my gosh, it was just so cute. You two just crack me up. I love your videos, so keep them coming. I'm so glad to see that you're doing them more often now. And oh my gosh, Lincoln, he's so cute. He's so cute. It's fun to watch 
him grow up just like with Priscilla and Chelsea and, and uh, seeing Cash, you know, grow up and it's fun. Okay, Q&A. Oh, shoot. I was supposed to do the last two weeks and there was a question. I'll have to... I So this is what I do. I answer people's questions right away in their comment. I reply and answer it there and then I just rehash it up here on floss tube in case other people are wondering the same thing. So for last week, I'm just going to forget about that. Kevin's coming in and Teeny's going to bark. So I'm going to have to pause here for a second. Here it comes. Hello. Come say hi. Hi. Oh my, well, yeah. Okay. Go lay down, boo-boo. Lisa asked a question about what Ada would be good for for the Love of Nature sampler. And I told her I don't know Ada colors. So if anybody can help, I have mine stitched on corn silk and it's linen. So it's got a yellow color to it, but I told her any kind of like neutral background would be good. I prefer like warmer tones with that particular pattern, but I mean, I think any neutral color would look great. So if anybody has any suggestions on Ada for uh, the sampler for the love of nature, please put that in the comments and I will read that off next week. And then uh, I had a question, where can I find the dog cross stitch that you showed, the one that I fully finished on that little paddle, I showed that last week. That's in my Celebrate 15 Years of Needlework, the cross stitch book. So that's available at your LNS, hopefully. If not, they can get it for you, um, or we have it in our Etsy shop. Okay, so whips. Uh, whips. We have, I guess for painting, I only have the one whip. I'm gonna to have to get up and move it. So before I could take what I'm working on, I could take that off the easel. But because it's round, as I'm working on it, it kept rolling, it was driving me crazy. So I put a little hanger at the on the top of it and then I, I uh, tied it to my easel. So I'm gonna go get that and let you take a gander. It's coming along. I finally found something big enough to make a perfect circle here. So for, for Jesus's halo, I took a plate. I had a, a nice plate down here. It was a perfect size. So I have a perfect circle now for his halo. It was way off. But hers, Mary's was even further off. It was really, really bad. So uh, I searched and searched in my studio for something that was big enough to trace a perfect circle. And I had a box on the workshop side of the studio that had some cradle boards in it. Well, I had an 18 inch cradle board and it was perfect for this. Well, it was, it was like right here. That's a good two and a half inches that it was off over here. It was off on this size too. It was basically like her halo was squished. So now I got the halos perfectly circles, circled and then I uh, painted a little bit more on their crowns. I used that amazing paint. Uh, it's a plaid folk art paint called Gold Tre Gold's Treasures. Yeah, Gold gold Treasures. Treasure, Treasure Gold. I don't know. What the heck's it called? Yeah, <laughs> Treasure Gold. And use the rose. I use rose gold on their crowns to have them be different than the halos. So I'm gonna put a bunch of detail in the crown, put some, you know, maybe some, like they have jewels in them or something like that. And then I gotta work on their hands and then Jesus's um, clothing and it'll be done. So we're really close to having this done and I'm super excited. But yeah, look at that shimmer. I mean, their, their halos and their crowns just really shimmer in the light, I love it. And then I worked on my cross stitch, my mystery cross stitch. I wanted to get this star done, but it didn't happen. Let me get it closer. So 
So here it is. Long may she wave. And then I'm working on that little star there. So this is one of those things that you're just going to see it as I go. This is a new design I'm working on. I'm working on a cross stitch book that's going to have all Americana things in it. And this is one of them. So yay, it's coming along. And I'm just loving it. I wish I had more time to stitch, but I wish I had more time to paint too. So <laughs> there you go. I can give you a little tease. Okay, so long may she wave. I'll give you that much of a, a little teaser. And then for finishes, I got this done. I'm also doing a punch needle book of Americana birds. This is, no, my bad. It's just folk birds. It's not Americana birds. This just happens to be kind of Americana colors, but I'm going to go ahead and show it even though it's not fully finished and I probably should wait until I'm done with all of them, but. I want to show some stuff. But I had so much fun punching this one. I love it. I love the colors. And uh, so look for this to come out at market. It won't be till March because I have to punch all of them and uh, make the book. So, yeah, folk bird. So I'll have it'll be a folk bird punch needle book, and then I'll have a, the same designs will also be available in cross stitch, but it'll be a separate book. Okay, now, for CW Live, I did a little practice run. We are working on photo collages, so you can use your own photo. You can use antique photos of people that you don't know. You can use magazine pictures, whatever you want to use. That's what we're doing in CW Live last week and then this week. So I hadn't done one of these in a long time, so I wanted to play around with it. And I took this picture of little Miss Ellery from last summer, and I made this. So I took the picture and I added the hat, I added the flower, I added the bale of hay or straw, I added the chickens, and then I added the, the little barn back there. First I painted the background, and then I decoupaged all of that on there. It's not quite finished, but I ran out of time before it was time to start class, and I didn't have this quite done. But anyway, so that's just something fun that we're doing in class. So during class the one that I made. Okay, this is kind of funny. So I had these two pictures. I had this picture of Ellery. I wanted to do an Americana one. I wanted to have her holding a flag. So I had this picture of Ellery. Well, I think her face is great on that one. Her expression is really cute. But I didn't like the foreshortening of her arm very well. I didn't like the angle of her arm and I didn't like the way her feet, like she, the way she was standing. She was getting ready to take a step. So her feet were kind of wonky. Well, then I had this picture. Now this picture, her feet are perfectly straight. You know, she's not taking a step and I like her arm being up more, but I didn't like her expression. She's not smiling and she's not even looking straight forward. So through the magic of Photoshop, I created this where it's got this body and then I Photoshopped the head from the other picture onto it. And then I, when I printed it, I printed it smaller. And this is what I ended up making with it. So I changed her dress to red. I painted over her dress. I painted over her pink hat and made it blue. Her blue shoes or sandals I made red. And then this this flag was also decoupaged on. I printed that off and decoupaged it on. So she was hanging on to a stick. And the stick ended, I think, about here or something. Yeah, I think it ended here. So I just painted the stick up there. I painted over the flag because the colors were, they were messed up. And then I printed the Stars and Stripes Forever, Chris 
helped me figure out, I didn't know what I was gonna put for wording and she mentioned that, so Chris Williams, thank you. Painted the little house, I wasn't planning on painting the house, but it worked and I painted it the same colors kind of as the stars and stuff so that so that she would stand out as well as the flag. And then I just used scrapbook paper and freehand cut those stars out and decoupage those on. So this is just on a piece of nice 140 pound watercolor paper that I painted the background first, decoupage everything on. No, I decoupaged her and the flag on and then I painted around it, everything with white. And then I decoupaged the stars and the the lettering on. So that's what we did in CW Live and everyone's working on theirs this weekend and it's a really fun project and I plan on doing more of these with other family mem members. I want <laughs> I have an idea of one I want to do a, for Easton. I want him writing something and I thought it'd be cute to have him writing Ellery or Ellery. Athena, like if I have a picture of Athena, which I have a million of hers. And then I just couldn't find a good picture of Easton. Well, I have, I told, I asked Bree to see if she had any pictures of him, like writing something that I can Photoshop or decoupage Easton writing Athena or writing a goat or riding a sheep or whatever. I just think it would be fun to have him riding an animal. I don't know why. I just think it'd be fun. Um, but then when they were here last Thursday, I took a bunch of pictures of him outside. And so there's a lot of them where he's holding something. And so I like, well, maybe I'll make him holding a flag as well. That way they match and I can give those to Brie if she wants them. Okay. So that is that. Oh, well, I was going to show you whims of the past real quick um, because this is where this whole idea came from to do this in CW Live. So I'm just going to uh, need to bring these closer. All right, so this picture, probably everybody has seen this picture. It's a very famous photo from back in the day. So I cut the ladies and the sign out and then I made this and so I decoupaged the flag on and then I changed it to let freedom ring which I really should have let I should have left it the way it was to be honest now I'm looking back then another one that I created is I love this vintage photo so it's fun to do them with vintage photos it doesn't have to be somebody that you know so I took that and I created this. I made her not so scantily clad with her undergarments showing. And I repainted the book. I added blush and lipstick to her. And then this is scrapbook paper, the flowers in the background. And it says, I read a book one day and my whole life was changed. And it's a quote by or Orhan Pamuk probably butchered that name so yeah these are so much fun to do you guys and anybody can do them you do not have to be an artist to do these this one was one that I love this one this is a print I don't have the original but she's decoupaged on from one you know photo this barn was from another photo and then the three sheep were from another photo so I, I painted the background and I added everything on painted the, you know, made it look like there's bushes around the barn. And then I took some paper and printed off a wool seeker and put that in there. So it looks like she's gathering, getting, or she, I don't know. I was going to say, it looks like she, she's getting ready to shear the sheep because she's got this big empty basket, but don't they look like they're already sheared? So anyway, Then here's a couple that are different style. Now this is somebody I don't know. It was just an antique photo that I found. I don't even know if I found it on the internet or where I found it. This, I, met, I did these years ago, you guys. But this one's a little bit more simple. So this is all scrapbook paper. This, this, this polka dot. And then I painted the background and everything. Now this picture is actually a, a photo of my mom. This whole part here her hand, all of that is an actual photo of my mom. And then this is scrapbook paper as well as this. 
And then for the heart, I put shimmery metallic paint. Oh, you can see it a little bit there. Yeah, that's my mama's little girl. How sweet. And then I had some fun with some Halloween ones, you guys. This is, <laughs> this, now I don't know this family either. This was just a vintage photo that I had. But how fun would it be if you had a family photo and you took the family photo. I like that the I like starting out with a black and white photo to be honest. I really like that. I added blush to all their cheeks. I added glasses. I cut that out of scrapbook paper. Now this is the original because I can feel what scrapbook paper. So their glasses or whatever goggles are scrapbook paper. The whole background scrapbook paper. Put the little hats on them and trick or treat. Now that is actually from a magazine. So Trick or treat. I cut that out from a magazine. So isn't that fun? So this is a really pretty photo. This girl's really pretty. And it's just a vintage photo that I found somewhere. I have no idea where. And the whole background is all scrapbook paper. I put her on and then I painted over. This is all, you know, to make it Halloween colors. Put blush and lipstick on her because it was a black and white photo. I don't think her hair was quite that long and luscious. But I did that. And then her witch hat is scrapbook paper. The scary Halloween, I can tell that that is magazine paper because it's shiny. And then down here, I think I printed that on my computer. You say witch like it's a bad thing. So yeah, that's cute. And then this one, I think this one is so vintage looking. Again, just a vintage photo, black and white. I added blush and lipstick to her. Uh, her hair, I don't know, I can't remember from that long ago if her hair was quite that long and luscious. But uh, the, all the background is scrapbook paper. It says down here, witchy poo. I can tell that's lettering from a magazine. Yeah, and I'm, her witch hat with the stars, that is scrapbook paper as well. This, I don't know if I printed that from the internet or what, but... This, this scrapbook paper was Halloween and it had skulls in it. So it just worked perfect for this Halloween image. I don't have any FFOs to show you, but I did have somebody send in something that they finished of mine. So thank you so much, Jan Holder. She sent in Lincoln's Eagle. <clears throat> Excuse me. She said, I stitched this on 40 count linen Witchelt sandstone using all of the called for floss. Finishing items all purchased at Hobby Lobby. The wood piece, the brand is Wood Pile. The number is 1431238. The paint was folk art acrylic. The color was uniform blue. And the trim is natural jute. She even gave the number for that. Number 340596. Jan Holder, thank you so much for sharing that with us. This seriously is one of my <laughs> favorite designs. I have people often ask me, what's your favorite design? Cross stitch design. And I struggle with that because I mean, I love them all. They all have, a, you know, that's like asking which one of your children is your favorite child, you know? But uh, Lincoln's Eagle, Land That I Love and Newcastle Bouquet, probably those three stand out a little more than the others, but I love them all. So thank you, Jan, for sharing that with us. So if you guys uh, are interested in having your fully finished Teresa Kogut design shown here on my floss tube, all you have to do is email me at teresakogut3 at gmail.com. And if you can include the stitch, you know, the fabric that you stitched it on and how you finished it, that's awesome too. That's very helpful. Okay, so let's move on to how we really need to get going here. I got my Paper Minty Studio order today and I was unpackaging it for you and I didn't hit the record button so you've missed the actual unpackaging of it it's been one of those days guys one of those days so I wanted to show you this washi tape you see, I'll just put a little piece of it on there for you oh I like that it's clear. Let me just zoom in. It would be easier, I think. 
a really pretty muted kind of colors with those moths. So cute. Look at these. Look at the bees. Oh my goodness. So I decided on hers to always get the clear stickers. There's a bunch of daisies. I like the clear because it's transparent, obviously clear. <laughs> means transparent and it doesn't leave that white outline around it so so cute this is the floss tube one look at the houses oh how cute love the blues and yellows together and then here's some more blues very nice very nice so Anyway, just wanted to show you guys what I got from Paper Minty Studio. All right, so haul. I got in the mail from Amazon. I wanted those magnets. I didn't buy I didn't buy the right ones because I was watching Corn Husker State Stitchers. And they were showing the magnets, and I'm like, shoot, those aren't the ones I bought. But these seem to be holding okay. Uh, I will have a link to them below. But uh, go watch Cornhusker State Stitchers because they, I think theirs are stronger. These aren't real strong. So if you have a lot of fabric to roll up, I don't think these will hold it. So... And with that, I got Heart of the Home, Bonnie Sullivan. Okay, so y'all know I'm in the process of getting accounts set up to purchase wholesale, wool wholesale, so that I can start designing wool applique. I have so many, uh, so much of my art that would lend itself to wool applique. So I have been looking at books and just looking at other people's stuff. And I'm like, I've never heard of Bonnie Sullivan. I mean, everybody knows Maggie Badamasi. Badamasi. No. No. That last name is a youth group. I worked with this girl in youth group and her last name was Badamasi. Oh my gosh. Maggie Bananami. Now, the reason I know how to say her last name is because I think of Bananami. And I'm a do, 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 do. You know what that's from? The um, Muppets. Banana me. Do, do. Am I? Did you get it? I don't know. Anyways, Bonnie Sullivan. I had not heard of her, but when I saw her work, I was like, Oh my gosh! And this book is fantastic. Look at that bed cover. Isn't that awesome? Look on the back. Look at that. Oh my gosh! So her work is really beautiful. So I got that book when I got the magnets. Then, just today, I got, oh, when did I get this one then? See, now I'm getting confused. It doesn't really matter, but I don't know. I have another Bonnie Sullivan book here. I like her, can you tell? A, ch the, a Change of Seasons, Folk Art Quilts and Cozy Home Accessories. This book is full of yumminess. I'll just do a little flip through these stockings for Christmas. you got to be kidding me. Look at those stockings. How adorable. So cute. And then, so she shows all like four seasons. Look at this quilt. Now what I love about what she's doing is she's combining quilting with wool applique. Can you see that? Oh, there we go. So that's really cool. I mean, I don't know, maybe there's other people doing that, but I love that. So that is that. Then I placed an order because I'm impatient. I wanted to set up a wholesale account with uh, Primitive Gatherings, Lisa Bonjean, and I'm losing my train of thought.
I applied to, for a wholesale account so I can buy their wool wholesale. And I was too impatient and I went ahead and placed an order retail because I was so excited <laughs> about all their stuff. So I bought this book. I watched a video of Lisa's. She was talking about this book and how thorough this book is when you're doing wool applique to help teach you and help you to learn how to do it. So I went ahead and bought that book. And then I bought um, needles. These are needles specifically made for uh, wool applique. They are, what are they, 24, number 24 chenille needles for wool applique. And uh, you get 12 of them for $6. So I got those. And then I bought this amazing and super cool ironing mat. So I'm going to tell you about this ironing mat. She has three sizes, a 12 by 12, a 20 by 20, which is what I just showed you, and then a 20 by 58. Well, I don't have room for a 20 by 58. The 20 by 20 is like the perfect size for me. I mean, look, it's pretty big. I think it's plenty big. But what I love about it is I don't have an ironing board down here at the studio, and to be honest, I hate getting out my ironing, ironing board at the house. It's like it's loud, it's clunky. I'm thinking about buying another one of these to use at the house because I iron my cross stitch and punch needle at the house before I bring it down to the studio because I don't have an iron down here yet. I have to get one because this is where I'm going to be doing my sewing and, and stuff like that. Any whoosie whatsies. Uh, it's a wool ironing mat. It says this mat is made up of half inch all natural dense interlocking wool fibers that create the perfect pressing surface. We recommend the use of this mat because of its ability to hold heat. This allows for your fabric and wool projects to be heated from both sides at the same time. You can use these mats with or without steam and it will not damage the mat. The adaptable property of the wool surface lessens the chance of losing the dimensional work on your projects as it will not completely flatten the threads or knots. These mats are perfect for placing near your sewing machine to save on making numerous trips to the ironing board. They're also easy to transport to classes and retreats. Genius! So yeah, I'm really excited to have that now. And then the next thing I got from them is this a beautiful, wow, it looks, the light hits it, it looks blue. It's actually supposed to be black. But it is, so I didn't realize this, but Lisa, Lisa Bonjean, she has fabric produced with through Moda fabrics. So this says, uh, what does it say on it? Wool and needle flannels, uh, farmhouse flannels by Primitive Gatherings for Moda. But this would be great to use because I uh, most of the stuff I design, I want it to be on a dark. I like the dark background for wool applique. Not that all of it's going to be dark, but I just... Ooh, this is really rich, but I think this is actually navy. I really don't think it's black. But for red, white, and blue stuff, I love it. So yeah, very nice. So it's kind of a funny story because I I missed the email that they sent back to me from Primitive Gatherings. And when I, I so I emailed them and I said, can you tell me if my account has been approved or not? And I got an email back saying, I'm sorry, but we could not approve your account because you're an online shop. We only wholesale to brick and mortar stores. And so I was like, oh no. I mean, I'm like heartbroken. And then I thought, you know what? I should tell them what I'm doing with it. So I emailed the lady back and I said, well, I'm not going to resell your products on my Etsy shop. I said, I am a designer and I'm getting ready to trans." late translate my designs into wool applique so i'm just basically looking to buy the wool wholesale and she's like oh oh i'm so sorry yeah absolutely blah 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 and i had to reapply and everything and within five minutes she had my account set up for me so it's all good so now i can buy wholesale from primitive gatherings oh and blackberry primitives oh my gosh i had the best conversation with tanya oh my tanya I think it's Tanya. The best conversation with her. She is a sweetheart. So uh, I got a wholesale account with her. I have a wholesale account with Door Mill. 
with W. Cushing and Weeks Dye Works because they sell wool as well. So I have a lot of places now that I can get probably pretty much any color I want and, you know, different uh, like solids and then the ones with the patterns in them, plaids and different things like that. So I'm really excited, you guys. I'm like, this. it's getting closer and closer and closer. I'm, I have an old computer that I'm going to back up the entire computer and then I don't know if we're going to just chuck it or what we're going to do with it, but it's it's old and it's, it has a lot of issues. And so I rarely use it and it's taking up a whole desktop. So that's going to become my sewing area and I'm going to get my sewing machine out and I'm going to have this wool mat set up. I'm going to buy an iron and I'm going to start ordering wool so it won't be long, guys, and I'm going to have wool up with hay patterns. I'm stoked. Can I just say, I wish there was more hours in the day, or I wish I didn't have to sleep. But I really do like my sleep, and I need it. But because I was thinking the other day, oh, I, I want to paint more. <laughs> I want to paint more, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. Like, I, my mind never shuts off. Never, ever, ever shuts off of things I want to do and create and, and I'm still doing my whimsy 365 sketching every single day. And I just, I want, like, I wish I had more hands and more time. So, but I've had people offer to help me. I've had people offer to help me do punch needle, which I never thought I would do because I love doing punch needle. But now that I'm doing cross stitch as well, and I'm going to be doing some wool applique myself because I feel like I need to know how to do it myself before I, you know, like I did with cross stitch. I think I would have been a better designer when I first started had I cross stitched and had a feel for what it was like. So anyways, um, but I, so I might be farming out some of my punch needle and I've already got people lined up that are going to make the wool applique models for me as well. So uh, things are moving right along. All right. I think that's it for haul. No. Oh no. It's definitely not definitely not done. So I bought this, I bought this watercolor book, hence my reason for wanting to paint more. I love acrylics, but I also love watercolor too. But Charles reads watercolor secrets. I know you're not interested, but let me just tell you, I love loosey goosey watercolor paintings. And I have been watching some art vlogs while I've been stitching and punching. And I need to loosen up I, t I paint so tight, like every, you know, I'm just, and I really want to loosen up, basically hold my brush further away, use bigger brushes, paint with a palette knife. I'm going to challenge myself to do one new thing a week. Like I'm going like one, I'm going to do a painting where all I can use is a palette knife. And then I'm going to do another painting where all I can use is two different size brushes, and I have to hold the brush towards the end instead of way up tight. Because if you hold it, the closer you are to the bristles, the tighter you're going to paint. If you hold it back, you don't have as much control. And I want to paint a little bit more loose. And that's always been a struggle for me. Always. Ever since I started painting. So, yeah, I'm doing that. But, I mean, I'm painting every week anyways. So this will just be something that I do in place of you know, like for what you paint Wednesday, I want to paint something loose and fun for you guys to watch. So it's not like I'm adding to my schedule. It's just in place of. So then today, after we met our friends for lunch, lunch, we met our friends for breakfast. <laughs> we went to Millington and had breakfast with Amy and Roger. And it was wonderful because we hadn't hung out with them in a while. So we did that. And then we went up to Norm's Meat Market and we got delicious meats and stuff for the week, more like two weeks. And then on the way back, we stopped at Mike. I already told you this, didn't I? We stopped at Mike's Antiques. Haven't been there in a while. You are not going to believe what I bought. You guys, when I saw this, I was like, what? I've never seen anything like this at any antique store ever. Look what I bought. I really should have something behind it to show it off better. Look at you guys. Look at how cool this is. You're not going to believe what I paid for. And look, it works. Oh, oh my gosh. So it was $125. So 
So I got up to the the register and I mean, I have no idea, no idea what these things go for. And she said, oh my gosh, that's really cute. And I said, is it not the cutest thing ever? And I goes, it's a little bit more than I want, would like to pay. That's all I said. And she goes, I'll give you 10% off. I got it for $112. I got home and I looked it up on my phone. There's one on Etsy right now for 400. What was it now? Oh, I wrote it down. I found one on eBay for $308.75, and there's one on Etsy for $498.97, and I got it for $112. Bam! I was so excited. So I, this is going to be on display down here at my studio. It is so stinking cute. And then I bought, my battery's about to die on my stinking camera. That's such a bummer. Then I bought a book for finishing a nice blue book for red, white, and blue, which I'm doing tons of that right now, so that's good. And then I bought this vintage photo that I can so see doing a photo collage with. Look at how cute this little girl is. Or maybe it's a little boy. I don't know. But look at how adorable. They had a lot of uh, vintage photos there, but this one just stole my heart. How sweet. So that's my haul, and I think it's amazing, and I'm really happy. It was a good haul week. Okay, so let's do giveaway, and hopefully my battery won't die. Last week, you had to say finish, and by the way, thank you, everyone. Everyone, I love your comments. Some people finish right away. Some people have a ton hanging in their closet because they don't like the finish. They just like to stitch. Everyone's different, and, you know, finishing... It can be intimidating, especially on a larger piece. I would never attempt something really large myself. I just, matter of fact, I have two things at um, Paula and Carlton's Place Craft Gallery in Ohio. Right now I'm getting framed, new releases coming up. And uh, anyways, I just appreciate all your comments about finishing. I thought it was great. So you had to say the word finish, and I'm going to insert the YouTube random comment picker here. All right, so we're doing this on my phone today. Let's see who wins. And the winner is Clara L. Creative, and she said, you are one busy lady. Take care of yourself. I finished some of my finished stitching, but most of them are waiting patiently within view in my stitching place. So thank you so much. Congratulations, Clara. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Congratulations, Clara. You won. I don't remember what you won. I'm going to have to go back to the video and look. I think it was a pattern of your choice, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to go back and look. So this week, my giveaway is something different. I wanted to do something a little bit different than what I've been doing. I wanted to do something red, white, and blue. So I'm giving away three weeks dye works. Brick, oak, and gunmetal. I don't know if you can really see that very well, but... Anyways, that is this week's giveaway. In order to get in the giveaway for those week's dye works, I want you to tell me what's your favorite theme to stitch. Like, do you like fall, Halloween, Christmas? Maybe you like samplers. Maybe you like farm animals. Maybe you like sheep. Let me know. Or folk art. Or maybe like full coverage. I don't know. Just let me know. And let me see. Your keyword is going to be stitch. So make sure you put stitch somewhere in your uh, comment. And you'll be entered in the drawing for those three beautiful, beautiful floss colors. All right, guys. That's it. Seriously? I said, all right guys, that's it. And my camera shut off because the battery died. Are you kidding me? Anyways, I had to pop back on here real quick and just say thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me. And if you could uh, please like the video, that'd be awesome. If you wanna share it, that's awesome too. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell and have a, an amazing week doing whatever it is you love to do. Try to stay cool indoors with the air conditioner on. <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget, create every day. Bye.
Aren't you supposed to be having downtime? What are you doing? Are you trying to lay down with Teeny Woo? Yeah. Okay. She might try to kiss you. <laughs> Teeny says I'm out. She's gonna come. <laughs> She's gonna come lay on your pillow now. <laughs> there, you there you go. Now you can lay next to her. She loves Teeny Woo. What's up, Tina? I love you, my cricket, Tina. <laughs> oh, shut up. Oh, that ain't nothing but a little cricket, bud. She's so comfy, though. <laughs> oh, he's in the water, you know that. It's not rain, silly monkey. Fire! It is cold. It feels good, huh?